side, knees bent. So I'm going to ask you to bend your knees. This way his abdomen's relaxed. Can you just come to First thing I'm doing is inspecting. I'm inspecting the abdomen for any skin lesions, striae, symmetry, uh, whether it's obese or uh, scaphoid in appearance. Um, if there is, uh, if I said symmetry, any bulges, any uh, dilated veins, discoloration, uh, masses, peristalsis, pulsations, general inspection. Now I'm going to move to auscultation. Diaphragm. Ask my patient, do you have any pain? No. If he did have pain, I would assess that area last throughout my exam. You don't have to put your arm on. Okay. One quadrant at a time. So I'm going to start here with the right lower quadrant, listening for bowel sounds, assessing if they're hypoactive, normal active, or hyperactive. Should be about 5 to 35 clicks or gurgles per minute. If I don't hear anything right away, I will continue listening up to one full minute in each quadrant. Okay. Move to the right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, left lower quadrant. Are you moving in, in that pattern because that's the direction of flow? From right low to up. That's what I'm comfortable with. There's really no correct direction of flow except for the fact that if the patient does have pain to do that area last. So here I started in the right lower quadrant. If this is where he had pain, I would start here and go this way. Okay. If he had pain up here, I would start here and go this way. Okay, so auscultation. Next, I'm going to percuss using the same technique as we did for the lung exam. I'm going to put do my general percussion, making sure I'm covering all four quadrants. I should hear timpani. There may be a few areas of dullness. Mostly timpani. He's pretty loud too. Okay, cover all four <laughs> quadrants. <laughs> And I wasn't like one, <coughs> two, three, four. I made sure I covered the whole abdomen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> From here, I'm going to percuss his liver borders. So starting with the upper border, fourth intercostal space. Resonance is down in uh, intercostal space. Resonance. Alright, <laughs> he's got two layers of clothes on here. Yeah. Let's say... <laughs> okay, we'll say it's right there. Can I make a mark on you? Sure. Okay, mark that area. Now, from his umbilicus, and I'm going to move up to get the lower edge. So the midclavicular line, moving upward. Okay. It was right there, which is right by his coxal margin. Can I make a mark on you? Yes. Mark that, and then measure it. You're measuring it. Should be between six to twelve centimeters at the midclavicular line. Okay. Now I percuss the liver, I'm going to percuss the spleen. Two ways you can do this, I will show you both ways. The first way is to assess trob space. So you're going to go at the lower costal margin and I'm going to percuss from halfway between the mid the midclavicular line and the anterior axillary line. And I'm just going to percuss along the costal margin. Noting the change from tympani to dullness. It should be at least the mid-axillary line. If it is before that, then we have splenomegaly. Okay. So that's assessing trough space. The splenic percussion sign, we use the last intercostal space, so now I'm moving up just a little bit, anterior axillary line. 
I'm going to percuss and keep percussing as the patient takes a deep breath in. So I want you to take a deep breath in and out for me. And out. My percussion note did not change. That's good. So that means if his spleen is back here, as he took a deep breath in, it moved forward, but it did not move forward enough to hit the anterior axillary line, which means there's no enlargement of the spleen. Percussion. Palpation. First, light palpation. Question. But another purpose of percussion is also to find out where the spleen is. We're doing that. We really don't know where the spleen is if we're not hearing anything. But anything. Well, we know it's somewhere back here. So when we do the palpation, it's just. We can start at the anterior axillary line. We don't have to start before that. So palpation. As I palpate again, if he had any tenderness, I would palpate that area last. As I palpate, I start with light palpation, which means one hand, I'm pressing less than one centimeter, assessing for any superficial masses or tenderness. I'm always keeping my eye on the patient. So, so I'm moving, and I'm going to show you over here how I'm moving. I'm moving in, kind of in a wavy motion, okay, pushing in. Okay, as if I'm kind of going like this, like little circles, as I go deep and light, deep and light. Okay, so I like to start over here, so I'm going to start here, move my way up, covering the whole abdomen, watching the patient's face, any signs of distress, any pain, and okay. light palpation. Got that? So it's kind of a, they used to tell people waves, so then they started going like this. <laughs> so I, I'm not quite sure what terminology will get to you the best, because the wave thing didn't work, so maybe it was a wave. But this, what's wrong with this is I'm lifting my hand up. We don't want to lift the hand up. Okay, we're assessing the whole abdomen. If I go like this, and then I go back down here, I miss the space in between. Deep palpation, I'm now using two hands. Deep palpation means deep palpation. Same idea. I'm going to press a little bit deeper. Okay. Going down, feeling for any masses. This is why we want to make sure the patient empties their bladder first. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And palpate for any masses, watching him for any tenderness. 